Okay. So, so what do we find? We found, well, uh, so let's go ahead and have uh, Lauren. What did you guys find? Big picture wise. Um, we just talked mainly about uh, the laws it gave you. So Newton's first law, an object at rest or in motion will stay that way um, if there are no unbalanced forces. Okay, so the first, okay, so you know, there was the first law and the first law was what? Um, an object at rest or in motion will stay that way if there are no unbalanced forces. Okay, all right. And then the second law? And then the second law, the net effect of unbalanced forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so F is equal to MA, right? Mm -hmm. okay, and then the third law? And then for every action, there is a reaction of equal magnitude but opposite um, direction. Okay, so for every action, there's a reaction, right? Mm -hmm. Equal and opposite in direction, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have the th three laws, right? Okay. So this is one of my favorite test questions to ask you about this, all right? To ask you to explain what these laws are and give me an example of them. Okay. All right. So Henry, give me an example of the third law. Okay, so for the third law, what I thought of when I read it was, so if I had a fish tank on a dresser or something, I have to make sure that the dresser, is my mic on? Yeah, it is, okay. I have to make sure that the dresser is able to support the weight of the fish tank so it can, because if, if the third law was false, then it wouldn't matter, but it needs to be able to push up on the fish tank as much as the fish tank pushes down on it without it falling. Good, that makes sense, that makes sense, okay. Uh, Logan, first law. Um, I think it's space, like um, like satellites just sitting in space. They'll stay in one spot, and, or they'll move continuously until something acts on it and changes it. Yeah. Are they are they are they continually at the same the same spot? Um, well. <laughs> There's no gravity, there's no force of any kind in space, so yes. Oh, well, okay, well, it depends, okay, it depends. Okay, okay so when you say- Well, if you're away from a big planet or a star, yes, but if you're nearest one, then then no. Okay, so you're, you're let's say you, uh, you're Comcast satellite, okay? Your Comcast satellite, that's in the, it's in the way up in the sky. Is that, is that staying all by itself and not moving? No. You know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to find out, what I'm trying, to, what I'm trying to get you guys to realize is that when you have Earth and you have a satellite, right, satellite that is up here, okay, it is not actually staying put. It is rotating around the Earth, but it is rotating around the Earth at the same speed that the earth is rotating, right? In other words, this is what we call a geosynchronous satellite. In other words, it is, so the, the, the earth is traveling at this speed. Well, this guy's gonna travel at the same speed, same angular speed, not linear speed, same angular speed such that it rotates together so that this satellite stays with whatever city it is and it is covering Salem area with its Wi-Fi or whatever, whatever, it's, whatever it's doing, right? Whenever it's, on, it's coverage, right? So your internet coverage or whatever, that would be geosynchronous using a geosynchronous satellite. Does that make sense? You've heard this term before, correct? No? No comments? I have heard of a satellite. Okay, all right. So it's called a geosynchronous satellite. Okay, so the three laws, right? The three laws. And then after the three laws, there was one more thing in here that the book talked about. And it says the G Newton's law of gravitation. Newton's law of gravitation, and it gives it in this 
Oops. So it's M1 times M2 times G divided by R squared, where M1, and you have M2, and the distance here would be R. Okay, all right. So the force that these two are together, so in other words, it's the moon being in the gravitational force of the earth type of thing, right? So the moon would be here, and you have the earth here, right? And it's held by, it cannot escape the gravitational field, therefore it's going to forever rotate around or spin around the earth, okay? All right. Now, the thing that you have to realize is that G is not your 9.8 or 32, right? This is going to be what? What is the point? What is the value here? 6.634 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, so realize that, that this is not your gravitational constant. This is actually called the universal gravitational constant. So then it's a 6.673. Not three, four, six, seven, three times seven, eight of 11. Okay, all right, you use that and that's it. So there's example 10.3. Let's do example 10.3 together. And so example 10.3, determine the weight of an exploration vehicle whose mass is 250 kilometers on the earth, on kilograms on the earth. What is the mass of the vehicle on the moon and the planet Mars? What is the weight? Okay, so the mass never changes. The mass is no matter where it goes, it's gonna be the same mass, okay? So the mass of the vehicle on the moon or on the, on the earth or the planet it's all going to be the same. It's going to be 250 kilograms, kilograms right? So 250 kilograms, all right? But the weight on the Earth, so the weight on the Earth is going to be M times G, where M is 250, right, kilograms. And then you're going to have G is 9.81 the meters per second squared, right? So it's gonna be 250 times 9.81, which turns out to be 2450 newtons, right? The weight on the moon, on the moon, it's also gonna be mg, but g is gonna be g of the moon, not the earth. 250 kilograms times 1.6 meters per second squared. So you know what, if I do this, I get 400 newtons. So the weight on the moon is about one sixth of this, of the weight of the earth because the G of the earth compared on um, the G of the moon Gravitational constant is about one sixth of that of the Earth. Okay. And then Mars is the same thing 250 kilograms times the G of Mars, which is 3.7925 newtons. Okay. Interesting to see that Earth has the largest gravitational force, right? It has 9.81, this one was 1.6, this one was 3.7, okay? All right, and I'll let you guys do 10.4 and we will be done for the day.